I'm so happy that you've chosen to take off B, off the beaten path. Your journey to holistic health starts here. Namaste. Greetings. Namaste. Rao Bat. Welcome to the Off the Health Cast. You've chosen to travel off the beaten path to true wellness. I'm Uncle P like Papa, like Master P, and today we'll talk about something that we all see every day. You probably didn't realize that there's healing all around us. In today's episode, we'll discuss copper and some of its healing properties. So whether you're working out or walking outdoors enjoying nature, working remotely in your new normal makeshift home cubicle, or if you're commuting on your way home or work, Always remember that wellness is the new currency. Here at the Off Be HealthCast, we will help you invest in the bank of self. Stay tuned. The way is known. The path is lit. Greetings and salutations, ancient ones. Namaste, electric beings. Yes, that means all you energy-based beings. Welcome to episode three of the Off Be HealthCast. It's electric. Healing properties of copper. We're off to an awesome start today. First, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who has taken the very first step on the path to your wellness, which is health education, arming yourself with knowledge. Thank you for being here. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to Off Be Healthcast, available now on podcasting platforms. Many, many thanks again. And we want to make sure that we give a big, big shout out to Wambi, the other half, my moon to the, my son, the other half of the Offbe HealthCast family for sharing that awesome information in episode two of the Offbe HealthCast on Immune Boosters. It's titled Winter is Coming. So make sure you go check that out and prepare because, of course, winter is coming and you know nothing, Jon Snow. Well, before we get started sharing some of the wonderful healing properties of copper, I have to first announce a new segment here on the Off Health Cast. Now, from time to time, we'll do a quick spotlight on a local healing business. It's an honor for us to spotlight, envelope please, Grandma T's Holistic Health Center. This, holi- uh, this local business has been providing holistic solutions for over 15 years. They are located on the peninsula at 4161 William Styron Square North, and that's in Newport News, Virginia, 23606. That's Grandma T's, the complete holistic, convenient health food store offering organic groceries, organic nutritional supplements, and personal nutritional counseling. It's family owned and operated since 1996. So yeah, make sure you go out and check them out. I'm also uh, happy to announce that Grandma T's is the only location where you can pick up the entire Offbeat Holistic Health Collection in person. So that's right. If you're interested in the do-it-yourself elderberry syrup kits or the no pressure anti-blood pressure herbal blend. Well, remember the one Wambi told you about on the previous episodes? Yeah, so make sure you stop by Grandma T's and mention Offbe HealthCast for 10% off. That's right. You'll get 10% off on your herbal supplements if you mention Offbe HealthCast. So Grandma T's is now the official distributor of Offbe Holistic Health Products. So they are one of our trusted partners. Make sure you show this uh, local family-owned business some support during these challenging times. And of course, you can always find us at Offbe LLC in the meantime, in between time, that's OffBLLC.com, O-F-F-B-E-L-L-C.com, your portal to wellness. So where are you right now? Yeah, there? Well, stop whatever you're doing and take a look around you. What do you see? Whether you're indoors or outdoors, I'd wager we're all going to see some of the same things. Do you happen to see any traffic lights, any telephone or electric poles? What about in your home or office? Any lamps, computers, monitors, any mobile phones? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Well, all these normal everyday items we take for granted and all these things have something in common. And if you haven't guessed by now, they or their parts are all comprised or utilize copper in their function. Just about anything that's powered uh, by electricity uses copper. 
So we are energy based beings. So it's only natural that we use copper as well, since people from the beginning of time have discovered not only the practical uses of some, but also some of the healing properties of copper. We are energy based beings. So it's only natural that we use copper as well especially since people from the beginning of time have discovered not only the practical uses, but also the healing properties of copper. First, from a scientific point of view, what is copper? Well, it's a chemical element with the symbol Cu and an atomic number of 29. It's soft, malleable, and a ductile metal with a very high thermal and electrical conductivity. Freshly exposed surfaces of copper, of pure copper, may appear to be pinkish, shiny red, orange, or brown. Also, you may find them with green oxides in them when you find those copper ores um, naturally. Copper is everywhere around us. The cables that allow us uh, our electronics to function, as we mentioned a little bit before, TVs, phones, fridges, lights, all commercial and private things. And it is probably one of the best conductors of energy. Now, you may ask, what is conductivity? Conductivity is the degree to which a specified material conducts electricity. Conductivity is the degree to which a specified uh -huh, material conducts electricity calculated as the ratio of the current density in the material to the electric field that causes the flow of current. It's a lot there. So now your next question would be if you're a science guy is or woman is what is current? Current is a form of energy that results from the flow of charged particles. Electricity being the flow of moving electrons, this produces a result called electrical current. And it's just simply physics and science. We are energy based. So if we look at it from your body's point of view, because as we know, as as within, as without, as everything that's in the universe is represented um, in your temple and the and the body. So your body is able to convert clean foods into energy. Your aura is an energy field. Your chakras are energy centers that spin. And so food, meditation, and et cetera is one way to strengthen your energy field. Copper and crystals are also tools help to balance and focus that energy. Let's read that again here because let's make sure you get that. This is very important here because as we're saying, we are energy-based beings here. And so there are a lot of things that we can use tools um, to help balance this energy. And some of those things are some of the things that you and take into, their, into your body. And some of those things are some of the things that you wear like copper, because as you've heard before, that your skin is the biggest organ before you eat anything, it probably touches your skin first. So again, your body converts clean food into energy. Your body converts clean food into energy. Your aura is an energy field. Your chakras are energy centers that spin food meditation etc is one way to strengthen your energy field along with copper and crystals which are tools to help balance and focus that energy again people from the beginning of time have discovered that there are practical uses and now we're, we're getting into some of the healing properties current uses modern uses and what we're going to find out is that it's all science uh, but we're going to break it down in a very simplistic way here so you can follow along so Copper, metal that you see everywhere, very soft, very malleable, may appear to be orange and red, with green oxides and colors. It's a, probably the best conductor, conductor of current and energy. That energy is represented as your energy field and the copper and crystals and the foods that you eat and the meditations and, and the positive affirmations are all things that lead you to the path. The way is known, the path is lit. Copper is all around us. It's used in modern times. Of course, we talked a little bit about that, but some of the ancient uh, uses of copper, just in personal experience and coming and going, because, you know, me and my wife and my family, we, we wear a lot of copper and we come across some continental people, people from maybe the continent. But one of the things that they always mention is that it is their way or, or in their particular culture that the young people always wear the gold 
because gold is also a healing metal as well. A lot more flashy, um, a lot more valuable. As the people transition into elders, uh, they tend to wear more copper. So that, that was an interesting fact um, that I just came across just in just personal in personal life. What I've come to find is that it's been used, um, copper that is, for health, wellness for thousands of years. It has antimicrobial uh, properties dating back even to the ancient Egyptians, the, the Romans, the Hindus. It was actually the first metal probably used by early man because it's just so abundant. It's found everywhere. Unlike other metals, it's found in pure, soft, workable nuggets. So it's everywhere. It's easy to work with, and you know what I mean? It's in little nuggets for you. We can say 8,000 years, probably even further. Um, years ago, it was beaten and used for simple tools. And then later on, if we progress in history, it was melted and added tin ore to it. And so when you take copper and, and you uh, add tin ore to it, you're able to make what's called bronze, right? So, and because bronze is a little stronger than copper because you're adding that tin, tend to it. So we know about the Bronze Age and you know that a bronze at some point became the main material for tools and weapons and ornaments and things like that. And none of these things could have happened, of course, without copper. So later on, of course, copper was used as a form of wealth, trading between countries, you know, far away from each other. There, there's copper coins and things like that. So of course, with the ancient uses of copper, there, there's still the, the modern uh, uses of those. And we're going to just delve a little a little bit deeper into those because we just want to get those out of the way you didn't know all of these amazing copper properties were all around you but if you just lose a little bit of critical thinking you say wow this thing is everywhere why well the most commonly found uses of of, of copper um, because uh, it's so conducive it's most common uses in electrical equipment wiring and motors so are you you know car buffs out here um, without copper it definitely wouldn't be happening one of the properties of copper also, it corrodes very slowly. So it's used in your roofing and guttering, rain spouts on buildings. It's also used in plumbing. You see that a lot here and more and more cookware, cooking utensils, you know, copper pots, copper woks, copper uh, grills, all those things. And, you know, just like in ancient times. So it's actually the same thing. It's almost like a, a re us rediscovering you know, a, a metal that was just widely used in ancient times. So jewelry, rings, neckwear, bowls, trays, containers, any household objects, you know, it, again, alloys. And alloys, when you take copper and you put something else with it, uh, like a tin ore, and, and you make a bronze. So it's used in roofing and things like that, again, because of its non-corrosive properties. So lots of properties, just practical uses of, of copper but while we're actually here um because we want to talk a little bit more about the physical healing properties of copper but i'm going to do a little segue first here this information here um you can find in the crystal healing bible it's by sue lily it's a great reference book um so just give you a little a pointer here of where you can go and actually locate some of this information about copper. So I'm pretty sure that you've always heard about, it's one of the things that I always mention really quick when I'm in passing with a conversation with people is that copper is good for arthritis, rheumatism. And so that goes back to, um, you know, the people from the continent of Africa who, who say that uh, the older people start wearing more uh, and more copper and transitioning from gold. And it's probably because it helps with their aches and pains. So some of the healing properties of copper, it reduces inflammation. It may also strengthen the nervous system and brain functions. So uh, just like home remedies, the same thing, you know, the elders in our community, they know something. They, they were able to keep the, the ways and pass them on to us, hopefully. Definitely copper is an essential nutrient in the human body, and it plays an important role in, in the healthy functions of many organs and systems within the body including the nervous system again, and your immune systems, the heart, brain, and skin. So your body has to have the correct amount of copper along with all the other nutrients 
in order for it to maintain its healthy function of systems and organs. Some of those systems and organs being the brain and skin. We talked about the skin being the biggest organ, the heart and your immune system. So again, winter is coming. You definitely want to stay prepared in these times here. So it's in fact, copper enhanced materials have been shown to have antimicrobial properties and are effective in killing 99.9% .9 of bacteria in fewer than two hours. What did you say? You're going to say it again. So first, I'm going to say that all my social media people, you're on social media. There was a meme that was going around a little while ago, and it was saying that, hey, copper protects or fights against the coronavirus. Uh, some people shared it. I think, you know, people take it with a grain of salt. You have to be kind of careful, I guess, with what with the information that's shared is a lot of misinformation or disinformation. Uh, I'll say it again. In fact, copper enhanced materials have been shown to have antimicrobial properties and are effective in killing 99.9 .9 of bacteria in fewer than two hours. So I know what you're thinking. I know what you're saying, Uncle Pete. Yeah, right. And your lips are probably twisted up like, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, buddy, whatever. But there's actually some information or actually what I would call proof. P-R-O-O-F, proof of healing. The world's largest clinical trial of copper-infused textiles and hard surfaces happened right here in the Hampton Roads area at Sintera Hospital from 2014 to 2016. I'll say it again. The world's largest clinical trial of copper-infused textiles and hard surfaces took place right here in the Hampton Roads area between the uh, years of 2014 and 2016. So, what what are textiles and what did it include? So what are we saying? We're saying basically they had a bunch of, let's see, copper infused, salmon hued, bed linens, gowns, towels, uh, patient gowns in all of the inpatient rooms. Those were there and they were used to reduce the occurrence of healthcare associated infections, HAIs, to all my medical healthcare people out there, my nurses out there. So in this case study, in this clinical trial, not even a case study, in this clinical trial, they placed these bed linens, gowns, towels, and gowns in all of the inpatient rooms because it was shown to reduce healthcare associated infections, HAIs. And so in addition to that, they took it a step further and they used copper infused bedside tables and bed handrails. So this is based on a 10 month clinical trial. Again, it was started at Sentara Lee Hospital in Norfolk, Virginia. It was the world's largest clinical trial testing the use of copper against healthcare associated infections. The trial determined that hard surfaces and linens infused with copper oxide compounds contributed to 80, an 83 percent reduction. And we got some medical words here. So clostridium difficile, it's called C. diff for short, C. diff, and a 78 overall reduction in multi-drug resistant organisms, MDROs including C. diff methicilline resistant Staphylococcus aureus, that's coded MRSA, and vacamycin resistant eterose, VREs. And this is in a real world clinical environment that it was had an 83% uh, 83 reduction rate in, in uh, the C. diffs and a 78 overall reduction rate in the MDROs, MRSAs, and the VRE. So these are basically different infections. Like I say, if you're a medical or holistic doctor or nurse, or you're studying that, you probably know exactly what I'm saying. Forgive me for not producing, uh, pronouncing them, right? However, I'm pretty sure you're catching on to what I'm saying. So this is a real world clinical environment. This happened in a real world hospital. It already had a robust, uh, robust protocol for managing infection risks certified by the healthcare accredited body. So they did this in a, in a hospital and this particular hospital had a very fleshed out protocol for managing infection risks based on them using copper. 
And these findings were certified by the healthcare accrediting body of the DNV-GL Healthcare. So I'm sure that's going to mean something to somebody. They actually did a clinical trial. They have the results. It's certified. That information is out there. You can, you can, you can Google that. Copper definitely helps to fight against infections. Copper definitely has healing physical properties. Clinical trial, the world's largest clinical trial, 2014 to 2006, happening in Hampton Roads, certified. The information is there. Check it out. Anyway, these results suggest that antimicrobial surfaces and linens may have a substantial impact in reducing HAIs due to the problematic MDROs in a hospital that has already employed aggressive infection control measures and has low rates for HIIs, according to the study paper. What that basically means, I guess, uh, is that not the copper alone, but as part of the treatment, as part of an, ingress an aggressive infection control process or program, using copper, the copper linens and the copper surfaces along with those, it's just like a, it's a wind shot. So again, check out that study. If you need the information, I can give it to you. But the University of Virginia Health System in Charlotteville, Kyle Edfield, MD, if you want, hit me up. Let me know how you like the podcast. I can shoot you those references. But if you do a, a quick Google search, I, I'm sure you'll definitely be able to find it. So really quick, just to finish up this segment here. Again, it was the largest clinical trial on copper. It was a success. Um, when I did the research on it, there were so many articles about them. The producer of the product, who made this stuff? They actually partnered with Cuprone Inc. in EOS services, and they, they have experience uh, embedding copper oxides in a variety of consumer products and fabrics and things like that, shown to be non-toxic non-sensitizing and non-irritating to the skin and is FDA registered. Additionally, EOS preventive biocidal surfaces are the only synthetic heart surfaces EPA registered for public health claims against bacteria. Wow. So what does that mean? That means that there's two companies who were already using copper into materials, got together and worked on this project. This one particular company, EOS, their preventive biocidal surfaces are the only synthetic heart surfaces EPA registered for public health claims against bacteria. Yeah. So that's, that's big. It was, a, it was a success. And in my mind that, that shows proof that copper definitely heals. There is uh, evidence to show that there is physical healing for copper or else why would they use it in the hospitals? Of course. So there's even more than that, right? So there is copper workout gear, copper lined recovery gear. As you know, it's a blood cl cleanser and, and, and purifier. A little bit on the, uh, on the clothing, uh, the copper compression, compression clothing. So we know about compression clothing, right? You, uh, a lot of athletes use compression clothing. It applies uh, compression to different parts and pressure to your legs, helps improve blood circulation, oxidation, all of that good stuff. If you remember probably, or you can probably YouTube it, it's probably up in 2001, Allen Iverson, he used a, a, a compression sleeve um, and it was specially made from him by one of his NBA doctors. Um, and he had something that's pretty common again in athletes or at least in basketball, bursitis, and he had swelling. He used an actual compression sleeve for his elbow. Now you see all of the athletes using them. And even, even in the video games and the 2Ks and things like that, you can even customize your player to have that, right? Just to add the cherry on the top or make it even more dramatic in the game, you know, he scored 51 points. And so now, like I said, that's like, oh, you can't play without it. So if you infuse copper into materials like compressor um, garments, it's going to take the healing benefits to the next level. Another story, personal story, I was out at, at a finance seminar that one of my friends had invited me to. And before 
any of these seminars, if you've gone to them, there's always the meet and greet section, and you know, and you're, and you're supposed to mingle and things like that. And I was introduced to some of the head members of, of the company. I mean, of course, I had on my copper, you know, might not have had on as much as I always did because, you know, we had on the button downs and everyone's dressing the part, so to speak. But I had on some copper. And what that led to is it often do is conversations with the head of these guys. So I found that we weren't actually talking about so much as the, the financial seminar, but we got to talking about the copper. And it was interesting for me to hear that uh, he knew about the healing properties of copper and he actually um, had used some of these uh, copper infused compression garments for some of the issues. So carpal tunnel, there's gloves that they make. Yeah, so I found that in the conversation, um, it became less about the actual financial seminar that we I was actually invited to, but it was more uh, along the lines of the copper that I was wearing. And it's interesting to me, as always, that as it being a conversation starter, he knew about the healing properties of copper and actually owned some of these copper infused compression garments and, and just went on to expound about how great they work. So they have them for gloves for carpal tunnel, people with carpal tunnel, their socks um, for people for arthritis, all different types of garments that you can use to aid in the healing, copper infused. And just doing some research, we, there's even um, masks now. So, you know, in these times and you can't go anywhere without a mask, you can definitely get you a copper infused mask if you, if you so desire. I uh, got to get all of the healing properties that you can. I do wear a lot of copper, haven't gone to the mask just yet, but there's leggings, all type of things. So the point is, is that these people, I think you athletes, uh, soccer players, basketball players, anyone that needs to uh, heal um, or needs, you know, or wants to get the best out of their body, it would be advantageous for them to take a look into these things. Like I say, Alan, oh, I, Alan Iverson scored 51 points with the copper on and it definitely works for arthritis. Wearing the copper bracelets is a way that a lot of the older generation may wear their copper. You know, they may not be able to wear a ring, but a, a simple copper bracelet may aid in their healing or an anklet. Wambi has some soreness or some numbness or a little something in her foot or her ankle or something. And she might've put on a toe ring, copper toe ring or anklet. And it definitely helps in, in the healing. So there are no super fixes. It is a way of life. These are just tools and things that you use to, you know, to aid you on your, on, on your path to healing. You know, we don't want to leave anything out there's a compass and, and we're here to help you at Offbeat. We've talked about the ancient uses, some of the modern uses, a, a lot about the physical healing properties of, of copper. And so there's also the metal physical healing properties of copper, metaphysical healing properties of copper. There's, there's also, if you're tuned into this type of thing, then you'll probably tap right into what I'm saying. If it's not, then I'm still learning a lot myself. So anyone that tells you that they know everything, then we know that they're not telling the truth. You know, life is, is a constant journey, journey of learning and, and we're taking that together. So some of the metaphysical properties of healing, copper is associated with the base chakra, the solar plexus chakra, the heart chakra, and the sacral chakra. Uh, represents a harmonizing, flowing, and a calming type of energy. Copper may help with mental upsets and emotional swings. For example, copper is found in, in readings. So for instance, you know, if you had copper in your 12th house, that could indicate that you need time alone to absorb all that's happening. You need to center yourself or ground yourself. So again, these are just some of the metaphysical properties of copper. The, again, you definitely want to delve deeper into yourself, but I can tell you that just personally, these things resonate with me and, and with us and our family. And, you know, hopefully it does with you too. So as we continue here, we've talked about copper. We're also going to uh, talk about how you can use the copper and the crystals, the gemstones in, in combination as tools. We talked a little bit about that but when you use the copper and the crystals together you use the copper to accentuate or enhance the healing properties of crystals and gemstones i mean wonderful things can happen 
copper being the uh, best conductor there is, copper being used for everything, electrical, energy, um, electronics. We are energy-based beings. And so we know that crystals are used and gemstones are used in, in Reiki and, and other healing arts, meditations, and, and things like that. Our ancestor is utilized crystals because they are from the earth. Uh, the crystals are our ancestors. And so you can use those on your altars and, and things like ancestor reverence and things like that. The copper and the crystal combination, wands, healing tools, again, they, they are tools to just enhance the properties of the crystals and the gemstones. And that's something that we are going to definitely talk about more. The crystals part of it, one of my favorite uh, crystals is the clear quartz crystal. It is the master crystal. And so if you take that master crystal and you know, the master healing crystal, you say, for instance, you had a wand created with that copper crystal, you could potentially, you know, heal yourself or begin to begin on the path to healing. But we'll have more about that. If you want to lo learn more about the crystal healing, shoot us a, a line, let us know. More than likely, we're going to see a, a, a crystal podcast coming to you soon. So definitely make sure you are subscribed here at Off the Beaten Path Holistic Healthcast. Yep, that's Offbeat Healthcast. You can find us on all podcasting platforms. And we're going to do our best to bring you the information that you need to be that compass and that get well wilderness. So as always, I want to thank you all for listening. Thank you for your time. I'm Uncle P, like Papa, like Master P. Uh, and make sure you tune in, tell a friend to subscribe to the Offbeat Healthcast. The way is known. The path that's lit, you're electric.